Now the problem these days, right, uh, in the media, in our social media, in all the media, the problem that they try to highlight is uh, whether to go for a cremation or for a burial, right? So most of you ask me that question, right? Uh, the students of my class, uh, to give you an idea. Uh, so I'm going to do this explanation for you. You already know several facts about them. But assuming that you don't know anything, I will explain all the relevant things, right? So when this discussion goes on, I have seen now most of the people already have an opinion, right? Due to religious beliefs, right? Or due to some reasons which you, we should act against those people who has the religious belief, right? Somehow initially all the people have some idea or most of the people, right? Then they try to find the facts to prove that. But uh, the correct way or the correct method should be, first you should have the facts straight, all the necessary facts. Then you should be able to come to a conclusion, right? So I'm going to provide you the essential facts. Especially, I saw many people try to quote the all-level science book for this process, right? Uh, several places actually only three pages state about this uh, virus in our all level science book because uh, we didn't have that much of importance such pandemics were not infecting the country in the previous syllabus actually the current existing syllabus was uh, constructed so uh, there are not a lot of information but people try to quote that book right, in the way that they believe to prove their beliefs, right? So let's first get the facts straight, then you can decide what to do or what not to do, right? So first, you know, the microorganisms, microorganisms, there are a lot of microorganisms. Microorganisms means the organisms, very small organisms that cannot be seen with our naked eyes, right? When they are taken individually, they can be unicellular or multicellular. That is how we define, describe a microorganism, a very small one. Right? So most of the microorganisms around us are useful for us, right? For our <clears throat> food industry, other chemicals production, right? For agriculture, many purposes, right? Microorganisms are very useful, but a small part of those microorganisms cause diseases cause diseases so we give them the name germs other names are also given but here germs right so when we talk about the germs in that germs category there are a lot of microorganisms bacteria cyanobacteria fungal varieties fungi likewise a lot of groups are there so in germs there is another group called virus virus right but the problem is up to this day with the information that we have we don't call virus as an organism virus is not considered to be living in science so is it non-living no so in science virus has kept in a strange place right neither living nor non-living why is that so how to define one thing is living or non-living? Is this living? No, it's obvious for you. It's not living. Why do you call this not living? Because this doesn't show any living characteristic, right? So what are the living characteristics? Growth, respiration, reproduction, right? Of course, there is a list. You can see, right? So if something shows those characteristics it is not a thing anymore that is an organism if something doesn't show few of those characteristics it is not a, an organism it is considered to be a non-living thing so virus from this list that i showed you shows only one living characteristic that is reproduction again that is only inside a living cell we call that cell a host cell so virus merely shows small characteristic that is possessed by us that is living so 
this kept in this middle part at the center neither living nor non-living the first thing that you want to know about wires right so let's go into this virus and see what it does how does it looks like right so since you quoted this uh, all level science book right now we can see here the things that are stated about virus in all level science book right so there are different shapes of wires right helical wires right envelope wires complex shapes likewise from that now the discussion is about covid right so the covid virus comes under envelope wires that means it has a covering right which is made up of protein and lipids right basically we call that as the protein envelope inside that right as you can see inside that there is dna or rna in virus commonly when it comes to covid there is rna so these strings small strings are the things which helps to produce exactly similar organisms like them inside the host cell or these little strings right this is just like a coconut you can see right these little strings are the ones who have that information to produce exactly similar new organisms right so they are the ones which contain that information when this virus gets entered to a living cell according to the information inside these small strings that is rna uh, virus can produce exactly similar new virus using the material inside that right so if you move to the 2d structure this 3d one previous one the 2d right uh, you will nicely see uh, the simple structure of that one there are some other parts right the simple structure of a virus which is coated covered by a protein capsule and the nucleic material dna and rna we commonly call them as nucleic material in science right so this is the simple structure of a virus now let's see what is the effect of a virus what can a virus do to us as i mentioned you earlier virus can get enter to our body right enter into our body initially it can enter to any system through any system to any system right but if it get enters to the blood stream it can easily go throughout the body river right because the blood supplies they are for many of the tissues you already know that part, right so when a virus enters to our body what it does is they invade our cells right imagine this is a cell you know the structure of a cell very well but imagine this is a cell right if this is a virus if this is a virus they initially enter to our body two or three wires right? they enter to our body and enter to a cell like this so after entering right now they are inside the cell like this after entering what do they do just like i mentioned you earlier using that rna information information which is inside the rna they replicate here they multiply reproduce ah now this is the only living feature that they show while they reproduce when they reproduce what do they do they take all the resources inside this host cell right it can be nutrients it can be digestion of the organelles that means there are important parts for us inside this cell so they destroy all of them ultimately what happens the whole cell gets destroyed as a result of that and right the case doesn't stop here and this number of virus is increased here due to the reproduction imagine three came here sometimes 3000 can get out right due to the reproduction 300 somehow the number is multiplied here so all the new virus coming out of this one after destroying that particular uh, cell right invade other cells of the body likewise this continuously happens for a long period of time so 
when considerable amount of cells get destroyed, right? When the body cannot withstand this destruction, uh, several symptoms start to appear and if it further increases, that can be harmful for our life also. So this is how we get ill from viruses. So in this case, I'm not going to explain any mechanism, right? Just trying to give you the basic information. They enter, they reproduce, right? This is just like a factory now, right? Produce a lot of virus and all of them then again go out and destroy the other living cells, right? Other healthy cells and huge destruction is done for a particular organ or for the whole body, right? This picture also shows you how they invade our cells. So this is how a virus can damage to our body. Now let's see how a virus can spread. This is the problem, right? With the spreading, we have a lot of myths and also we have a lot of opinions, right? Now a virus can easily spread from one person to another person. That is why due to this situation, we instruct you to keep this one meter distance if possible furthermore so that will be immensely helpful because the easiest method for a virus to go travel from one person to another person is through contacts direct contacts right and also through saliva right when we talk micro particles of saliva can go in one such micro particle considerable amount of virus can be Contain because they are very very tiny organisms, very tiny, right? even way smaller than a bacteria. So they should so the virus should only be or can only be observed through an electron microscope, very small, right? So those are the direct methods, direct contact when I'm touching someone, right? If there is a virus in me, definitely it can go, right? Due to my saliva, right? Or any other particular thing that means hair particle right? in saloons all these places right likewise directly they can go from one person to another person the second one right the second one is now imagine i am going to i am infected with a virus right so and i am going to be in some place in a cafeteria or something like that right with my sweat when i'm touching the uh, things in that cafeteria right Definitely virus can deposit on several surfaces, right? Virus can deposit on several surfaces like this, right? They deposit. So, even though they are inactive, right? Inactive in these surfaces, they are not dying here. They are not destroyed here, right? So, from virus to virus, the time which they can exist in a non-living surface differs, right? So here is the uh, time durations which is provided in relation to the COVID-19 virus, but they have not directly taken the COVID-19. They <clears throat> have taken the time durations of SARS-CoV-2. It ex behaves uh, exactly similar to the COVID-19. So this is uh, the estimations of the World Health Organization, World Health Organization estimations about the time which they can be on a non-living surface. So even though when they are not on a living surface, they exist. So if I am going to touch, now imagine I, I have spoiled this place with virus, then another healthy person comes here when he touches, right? These particles can get entered to his or her body. Then he or she can very easily get infected with the same virus. So that is the problem. So even though virus doesn't show any living characteristic when they are in a non-living surface, they can definitely be or they can definitely survive in non-living surfaces for a considerable time. Now, the problem with the dead body is right? usually person who dies from COVID has millions, billions of such virus inside their body, right? So even though he has died already, there are some materials which can a virus consume and live successfully for sometimes few months even. 
the person is there but there are materials which the virus can use just like I mentioned you earlier to reproduce right and survive inside a dead body so inside a dead body this virus can successfully survive sometimes for several months even right even though that's a non-living surface in this non-living surface this virus doesn't have anything to consume doesn't have anything to reproduce any nutrient but inside the dead body there are right so they can exist so when we bury a dead body what can happen is right so this is the dead body of the person right this is the ground level so such virus can go out right and add to the ground water right that is the possibility this is only a possibility please remember that one, right this is a possibility so they can add to the ground water they can mix with the ground water and you know we consume the ground water so if this is a water stream right which runs there's a depth right there's a depth i just i'm just going to show the possibilities there's a depth the ground water doesn't run this close to a dead body right but for some reason right the water and when they when we take out this ground water for other purposes this virus can survive so please remember right there is a possibility they can survive that is the thing that you that is the logic behind right the risk of this burial process the cremation under these temperatures that we use definitely any of these virus particles don't exist right so if we are going to bury a dead body this is the risk that we possess this is the risk that we possess uh, if you are going to bury right these are the scientific facts now if we go for the world health organization regulations they have clearly instructed to take that decision for the local governments right for the local government they have not instructed to cremate or they do, have not instructed to bury right so they give that because when we are burying we have to consider about this water depth ground water depth this water table right usually in sri lanka the water table is uh, considerably <clears throat> less ha having a less depth right uh, it means close to the ground so these are the scientific facts these are the things so this who should take this decision then right just like the world health organization has instructed the local governments right they have the expertise this is basic knowledge right they have microbiologists and they have molecular biologists they have geologists right they have uh, experts about the water management right you can use all this knowledge and take a straightforward decision right you can so this is what i did here is to give you a basic idea what will happen what is the possibility right they can really check whether assessing the sri lankan conditions right so this is not something to be done on facebook or in other media but why do they do this why do they uh, encourage people to do this now you know this is not the biggest issue in sri lanka at the moment right this is not the biggest issue at the moment this burial or cremation you know that due to this covid pandemic the whole economy of the world from a macroeconomic perspective if you take right the whole economy of the world has collapsed right and individual economists right from small business person to household Right? the microeconomic perspective all the economics have faced economies have faced some threatens right so that is the biggest problem that we face now and also in the upcoming years especially 2021 and 2022 you have to face huge problems right the depreciation of the rupee what of problems are there so these are the real issues there is one such issue right we don't talk about that one governments don't like us to talk about that one right so to hide these problems government or whatever the people do right try to take right, take into discussion these unnecessary topics and also this economic perspective is one, one huge problem that we want to discuss and as a country together we should find solutions for that one right to forget right to forget 
people like to give us carrots like this and to have debates for months right when this gets over they will give another one so please remember the real issues and also you know already know that one right the first issue economic one because that is be that is going to be existing for a long period of time few years definitely this impact the second one is the health issue you know that this covid is now out of control right no one can control that one if we compare the situation to the situation which existed in the in april may right 2020 i'm talking about right it was under control we knew where exactly patients are right how exactly this spread it right everything was under control even the government had the information they did a nice job but now it is out of control the responsibility is uh, partially with the government and also with the public general public right so first we should both the government and the general public should work on to reduce these impacts on people due to this virus not this cremation of burial we should try to prevent people from dying from due to this covid first and foremost right so we should force the government right, to take the necessary steps and as general public we also should take the necessary uh, steps to prevent this from spreading so please remember it's a very small issue facts are straight right uh, so you can come into a conclusion what to do but please remember this is not the biggest issue at the moment right there are several issues they are going to have very high impacts on all of us so together as a country we should address those issues rather than wasting our time on these useless things right so as a person who teach science people requested me for information so i gave you these things so decision is up to you to take the right decision thank you very much